Welcome back, Deep Diders. Today we're gonna uh, we're gonna be looking at Married at First Sight, a story that's really resonated with readers. Um, you know, kind of a, a blend of mystery, family drama, all that good stuff. And we're lucky enough to have this incredible in-depth analysis of the book to help guide us. So uh, ready to jump in and see what makes this story tick? Absolutely. You know, one of the things that really stands out to me about this book is the way it uses this this forced marriage, right, to mm -hmm. explore all these like this really complex social dynamics. So it's not just a love story, right? You get into family, class, all those kind of societal pressures. It's really fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So right from the start, we're dropped into the life of Frank Lee, our main character. Yeah. And he's three years into this marriage that he was forced into. And he's like, he's almost like a ghost in this rundown LA house with the Browns, his own wealthy family, the Lees, they've disinherited him. So he's really stuck between these two worlds that both reject him. Yeah. You really feel that isolation immediately, right? And the book doesn't let you forget it. It's like constantly reminding you, yeah, he's an outsider. He's treated more like, I don't know, a servant almost than like a family member. And there's this one quote that really, really struck me. It says, um, I was raised without the luxury of eloquence, never having the words to please her. And you just, you feel that yearning for connection, but he just doesn't know how to express it, you know? It's really sad. You see him trying, right, just to fade into the background. And then you have Mary Brown, his wife, and she, you know, she's beautiful. But there's this iciness, this distance between them. Yeah. And you can't help but wonder about her story, too, because she's also trapped in this marriage that she didn't want. Exactly. They're both victims, right, of yeah. these expectations, their families. And the book does a good job of not letting you just villainize her. You know what I mean? Like, she's got her own... Uh, her own struggles, trapped by this, these traditions and duties, is really interesting. Yeah, and then this whole thing with William Brown, her grandfather, like he's the one who orchestrated this whole forced marriage. What was his deal? It's a total mystery. Yeah, and just makes everything so much more suspenseful. Right, like why? What did he know? He held the secret to Frank's true identity. Why they had to get married. But now he's gone, and all those secrets, they're just buried, and Frank and Mary are left dealing with the fallout, you know? Right, and it just leaves you with all these questions, like, what did William Brown see in Frank? And how does, you know, Frank's connection to the Lees, to this wealthy family, how does that play into it all? It's like the author's dangling this key in front of us and then snatching it away, you know? It yeah. keeps you hooked. You can't help but search for clues, try to piece together Frank's past and how it led him here. Okay, then we get this turning point and it's Emma Brown's wedding. And suddenly it's like Frank's, you know, his outsider status is just thrown into this harsh spotlight. You see this huge gap between his simple life and the extravagance of the Browns world. And you just, you know something's gonna happen. Yeah, Emma's wedding, it's like it becomes a microcosm of this uh, this whole social divide that we see. And his gift to Emma, right, it's so humble compared to everything else. And you just cringe, like waiting for the humiliation to come. Oh, and it comes big time. Lucas Brown, Mary's cousin, he's just the way he mocks Frank's gift so publicly. It's like a punch in the gut. He even says, now, frankly, that can't possibly be a gift for Emma. It's just brutal. It's all about power, you know? The Browns using their money, their status to put Frank down. It's almost like Lucas is putting on a show, you know? Just to remind Frank where he stands or, I guess, where he doesn't stand with them. But here's the thing, and this is what I thought was so interesting. Yeah. Frank, he doesn't take the bait. He could lash out, get defensive, but he stays calm, composed. Yeah, and that's what's so fascinating about how strength is shown, right? Yeah. We're so used to seeing strength as, like, loud, you know, in your face. But with Frank, it's this quiet strength, it's resilience. It makes you wonder, what's going on in his head, you know? Mm -hmm. How does he keep going with all this negativity around him? Right. And there's this one line, um, it kind of gives us a glimpse into his mindset. It says, it was an unfair predicament for Mary Brown, and Frank, with a sympathetic heart, understood her sentiment all too well. Wow. Even while he's being treated like this, he still has empathy for Mary, right? He gets that she's trapped, too, and it just it speaks volumes about him and kind of sets the stage for how complex their relationship is. So we've got this mysterious past, the tension with the Browns, and Frank himself, this quiet but strong guy. Where does it all go from here? Well, remember those hints, those little clues we talked about earlier, that maybe Frank's not all that he seems. They become harder and harder to ignore as the story unfolds. Could he be the rightful heir to the Lees, you know, cast out by a jealous family member? What if there's more to William Brown's reasons for the marriage? I love that. It's like peeling back layers of an onion, right? Uh... Slowly getting to the truth. But it's not all about the suspense, is it? No, not at all. 
This book, it really makes you think about society. The Browns are so fixated on appearances, on their social status, that they're totally blind to who Frank really is. Sound familiar? It's like we all do that sometimes, right? Judge people based on what we see, their money, their clothes, and we miss the important stuff, the character, the good heart. Exactly. And that brings us to the biggest question of all, the heart of this story. Frank and Mary, this forced marriage, is there any chance, any possibility for real connection to grow in all this mess? It seems impossible, right? Obligation, resentment. But then you get these little moments, a look, a gesture, and you think, is there something more there? You see it, right? Like that scene where Frankie notices a scar on Mary's hand and he remembers how she got it when they were kids. He's paying attention, seeing things her own family doesn't. Or when he defends her from the gossiping relatives at the wedding. Small act of kindness, but it says a lot. It's like those moments are these cracks in the ice and you think, maybe, just maybe, something real could happen. It's definitely a slow burn, right? And that question, can love really grow out of this situation? It's complicated and it's what keeps you reading. So much to think about. But for now, let's leave it here. Think about this. How often do we judge people like the Browns judged Frank? Are we missing out on seeing who people really are, what they're capable of? It's something to consider as we keep going, right? Well, we'll dig into identity, acceptance, and see how Frank keeps going despite everything. Stay with us. You know, it's Frank's struggle to fit in, right? With both the Lees and the Browns, that really got to me. It's like, where does he belong? Neither family seems to truly accept him for who he is. It's so relatable, though, right? That feeling of being an outsider, like you're trying to squeeze into a box that just, I don't know, it wasn't made for you. And it makes you question everything, who you are, if you're good enough. Absolutely. And that's where this idea of self-acceptance, it becomes so important in the story. You see, Frank is surrounded by people who are putting him down all the time, judging him for what they see as his failures. But he has to find a way to believe in himself, even when everyone else doubts him. It must be so hard, especially when he's already so vulnerable. And the book, it doesn't shy away from that. You know, it shows those dark moments yeah. where you can tell Frank just wants to disappear. There's this one line that just like it hits you right in the chest. He says, uh, all I yearn for now is to exist as a forgotten recluse, to find solace in the solitude of my own misery. No one shall disrupt my peace. It's raw. You know, you feel his pain, his need to escape all that judgment. And it makes you think about what strength really is. Because yeah. Frank isn't the loud, you know, aggressive type, but he has this inner strength, this resilience that keeps him going. Yeah, it's quiet, but it's powerful. He doesn't let the negativity win, doesn't let it define him. And I think that's a really important message, you know. True strength, it's not always about being the loudest or the most forceful. It's about how you face your challenges, that quiet dignity. And speaking of challenges, we have to talk about social status, right? Uh. It's so obvious that the Browns look down on Frank because he doesn't have money or a fancy name. Oh, absolutely. The book, it's like this sharp commentary on how we value people, you know? Society puts so much emphasis on material things, on what you have, not who you are. And Frank, he's constantly being judged for what he lacks, not for the good man he is. Yeah, it's like the Browns are this exaggerated version of, you know, the upper class. Yeah. All obsessed with appearances, keeping up that image. And they completely miss out on Frank's true character because they're so focused on this facade. And it's not just them, right? Even Frank's own grandfather disinheriting him seemingly just because he favors another grandson. It's like these power dynamics, this idea of who's worthy, it even plays out in families. It yeah. makes you stop and think, you know, do I do that too? Do I judge people based on what they have rather than who they are? Am I missing out on something deeper, something real? because I'm too focused on surface things. Right, so question we all have to ask ourselves, but let's bring it back to Frank and Mary and this forced marriage. Because on the surface, it just seems doomed, right? Thrown together, all this baggage, all this resentment. But then there are these little hints, you know, these moments that make you wonder if there could be something real there. Yeah, it's like, is love even possible in a situation like this? That question, it just keeps you reading, wanting to know what happens. Think about that scene where Frank notices Mary's scar, the one on her hand. And he remembers how she got it way back when they were kids. He's really seeing her, you know, even when she's trying to hide. And then at the wedding, when he steps in to defend her from those gossipy relatives, he didn't have to do that, but he chose to. Small gestures, but they say a lot. Those little moments, they're like these little cracks in the ice in that wall they've built between them. And you start to think, what if there's a spark there under all that hurt and anger? It's a slow process, right? Yes. Like peeling back layers, slowly revealing what's underneath. 
And the question of whether love can truly grow from this, it's not an easy one to answer. It's about trust. Seeing each other's humanity, letting go of those defenses. Married at first sight isn't just a love story. It's not just a mystery. It's about human connection, all the messy, complicated parts of it. And it doesn't shy away from asking the hard questions. You know, yeah. it makes us look at ourselves, the choices we make, how we treat each other. It's a challenge to look beyond what's obvious and see that hidden potential in everyone. Right. You're spot on there. And as we move into the last part of the story, things really ramp up. Secrets come out, the truth is revealed, and Frank and Mary, they have to make some big decisions that'll change everything. Ooh, the suspense is killing me. But before we get to the final part, let's take stock of where we are. What have we learned so far? We've seen how strong Frank is, how resilient, even when faced with so much negativity. And we've seen the Browns, you know, with all their flaws and how their focus on appearances blinded them to who Frank truly is. We've talked about identity, about wanting to belong, about the pressures society puts on us, and how love, sometimes it shows up in the most surprising places. But there's still so much more to uncover. Frank's past, the mystery of it all, it's not resolved yet, and his relationship with Mary, it's still hanging in the balance. Buckle up, deep divers. In part three, it all comes to a head. Secrets are revealed, and we'll see if redemption, if transformation are possible. Don't go anywhere. Okay, deep divers, we're back and ready to finish our journey into Married at First Sight. We've seen Frank go through so much, all those tangled relationships and secrets, and now we finally get to see how it all plays out. What's the truth, and what happens to him and Mary? This is where the book, it goes beyond just a good story, you know. Yeah. It really digs into what it means to be human. Frank, even with all the crap he's been through, never loses sight of who he is. It's kind of inspiring, actually. A qu quiet revolution, you called it earlier, right? And as we uncover those secrets, you realize how much he's had to hide how much he's been carrying inside. And the truth, it's like a puzzle, more complicated than you'd expect. It makes you look back and rethink everything you thought you knew about Frank, the Browns, even William Brown, and why he did what he did. You just have to keep reading, you know? You want to find out what happens, but you don't want to miss any of the details. Yeah. And each truth that's revealed, it changes things. It sets things in motion for both uh, redemption and transformation, you know? Even the characters you might not have liked at first. They become more than just, I don't know, the bad guys. You see their weaknesses, what drives them, and you realize nobody's all good or all bad. Even the Browns, those snobby Browns, they have the potential to change. Yeah, I was surprised by how much I started to feel for some of the characters I didn't like at the beginning. The author does a great job of showing how complex people are. What about Frank? How does he handle all this, finding out these huge secrets? That's where his strength really shows, I think. He could be angry, bitter, but he doesn't let it consume him. He takes those truths and uses them to, I don't know, kind of build a new life for himself, one where he's true to himself. Yeah, it's like he's saying, I'm not going to let my past assign me. Yeah. You know? I'm choosing my own way. And Mary, what about her? Her world is turned upside down, too. Mary? Oh, she's interesting. She has to face her own prejudices, really see Frank for who he is now, not the version her family created, you know? It's like she's finally waking up. And that's when real love has a chance to grow, right? Huh? Not the forced kind, but something genuine based on respect, even admiration. Exactly. All those walls they built start to come down. They're connecting as people, not just as these roles they were forced into. It's like watching something beautiful grow in the most unlikely place. It gives you hope, yeah. you know, that even when things are tough, real connection is possible. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, what do we take away from Mary to First Sight? I think the big lesson is don't judge a book by its cover, right? The Browns had Frank all wrong, and we all do that sometimes. Make assumptions without knowing the whole story. Yeah, this book really encourages you to look deeper, to see the good in people, even when it's hidden, and to remember that strength comes in different forms. It's a story that sticks with you, makes you think about overcoming obstacles, standing up for what's right, being true to yourself. If you haven't read Married at First Sight yet, go find it. It's a page turner with so much heart, and it will definitely make you think. And that's a wrap for us today, deep divers. Keep those minds curious and keep on reading.